Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. Today we are learning some jazz guitar for rockers. Now, jazz and rock use two completely different vocabularies. I myself have been a rock producer for years and years and started out as a rock player and learned jazz second. Now, when I learned jazz, my first jazz guitar teacher taught me the things I'm gonna teach you right now which are a series of 16 different chord voicings and 14 arpeggios, along with some 2-5-1 progressions, both 2-bar uh, and 1-bar 2-5-1 progressions, which will also be uh, use 3-6-2-5-1 uh, progressions. We're going to do a couple of those as well. And I'm going to show you a simple walking bass line like I just did there. Uh, so let's talk about the chord forms that you need to know for jazz. Now jazz chord forms are different than rock chord forms. You don't use bar chords, you don't use power chords. Um, the series of voicings I'm going to show you will have the root on the 6th string, which is the low E string, and the root on the 5th string, which is the A string. So we call it root 6 or root 5 voicings. Now, you need to have um, 7 root, five vo root 6 voicings and nine uh, or eight, we'll, we'll count them here, root five voicings. We'll, we'll go through the root six voicing first. Okay, so the first voicings, these are voicings that you're gonna use to play any jazz tune that there is pretty much. This will, this will, will get you through any tune in the real book or any jazz standard if you know these simple chord forms. The first one we're gonna learn is the major seventh chord. Okay, this is the root sixth major seventh form. This is A major seven. I'm gonna do everything off the fifth fret here. Okay, off the fifth fret of this string and off this string. So this is A major seven. So you're, uh, you have this minor chord here. It's like a C sharp minor chord. Think of an A minor chord played here. You move it up to the fifth fret and then put your index finger on the same fret as your middle finger. But here's the trick. You actually have to mute the A string here. I'm muting it. I'm also muting the high E string. One of the things about jazz, if you're playing with a pick and you strum the chord, you don't want to have any of those extraneous notes. It's like playing rock, where you're playing power chords and, and you mute all the other st strings that you're not playing. It's the same kind of thing in jazz. Now you can also play this with your fingers, where you just use one finger per string and you pluck the whole chord like that. So you can do it either way. You still want to mute those strings because you don't want them ringing out. So this is the A major 7. This is the root 6 major 7 voicing. That's the first one to know. The next one to know is the root 6 dominant voicing. This is just a straight A7 chord. So you have these, uh, uh, you have the 5th fret on the D and B string, 6th fret on the G string, and then your index finger is once again on A. So that is an A7 root six voicing. That's very common. People use it all the time. The next voicing is the root six minor seven that you need to know, which is this. Now, I play it like this, where I borrow my third finger across these strings, like you're playing an A chord like that. You just move it up here, and you lay your middle finger across, and you play the note A. Once again, I mute the high E string, and I mute the A string, so that if you want to strum it, you don't have any extraneous notes. You don't want you don't want any uh, weird notes hanging over. Okay, so that's that is the root six minor seven chord. Now, if your finger does not bend like that, some people's third fingers will not bend and play that chord. You can also play it like this, where you actually finger every note. So it's very clean that way. So it's like you're playing an A chord here. You move it up here at the fifth fret, and then you just pop your index finger down and play it there. I prefer that because I got my pinky that I can do stuff with. I got my index finger I can do stuff with. It's always nice to have those. Uh, so that's the minor seven. So we have major seven, dominant seven. So A major seven, A seven, A minor seven. Then we have A minor seven flat five, also known as the half diminished chord. Okay. Once again, it's kind of like that major seventh, but you move it back a fret and you're playing it like this. You're really playing a C minor chord with these three fingers with an A in the bass, okay? That is an A minor 7 flat 5, also known as A half diminished, okay? That will be used for minor 2 5 ones. I'll explain that in a minute. And then the last voicing here of these root 6 chords is the A diminished voicing. Now, you're going to do, you're going to 
you're going to bar your, your index finger across these three strings, and then you're going to pop your third finger down on the uh, fifth fret of the G string, and then put your middle finger down fifth fret of the low E. And it's going to sound like that. That is an A diminished seventh chord. So you got A minor seven flat five or half diminished, and then A fully diminished seventh chord. Now, there's two other chord forms that are important because they're used really frequently. One is the dominant 13th chord. Okay, so it's, once again, you're, you're muting this A string, muting the high E string. So fifth fret, fifth fret, fifth fret low E, fifth fret of the D, sixth fret of the G, seventh fret of the B string. That is an A13 chord. That is used in place of an A7 chord. It's just a substitute, just to add that 13th note. That's a 13th note in the scale. That's why it's called a 13th. If I play a scale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay? It's used just as a color tone, so the, this, this can sound boring after a while. So we pop that 13th on there, and it sounds cool. So now that chord, if you move your pinky back one fret, it's a variation of it. You call it an A7 flat 13 or, or A7 sharp 5. It's the same chord. Okay? That's used, once again, as a variation of A7, A7 sharp 5, or A13. Okay, so those are the chords you need to know. I'll review them one more time. A major 7, A dominant 7th, A minor 7, A minor 7 flat 5, A diminished 7, A13, A7 sharp 5. Those are all the root six voicings to know. So it's one, two, three, four, uh, let me see again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven that you need to know. Now, those are all the root six chords. I think I said root five. Those are all the root six voicings, meaning the root is on the sixth string. Now, here are the root five chord forms that you need to know. The first one is D major 7. So the root, again, is on the 5th string here. The chords we just went over is the root on the 6th string, okay? So this is D major 7, D, A, C sharp, F sharp, okay? So you just have to look at the form there. It's almost like you're playing a power chord. Then you pop this note in here on the 6th fret, and then pop your pinky on the 7th fret. And you're only playing the inner strings. I got that muted. I got that muted. So if you strum the chord, no extraneous notes come out. Or if you just pick the chord, same thing. That's D major seven. Now, if I bar my index finger, take out my middle finger, we have D seven. Okay, very common voicing. Uh, that's your second one. Your third one is D minor seven. So I've lowered this note. So I've got the power chord there. I'm barring my index finger, fifth fret. Then I get the sixth fret note on the B string. Now, this is D minor 7 flat 5. This note here is the 5th. That's why it's called a flat 5. D minor 7 flat 5 or D half diminished. Okay? And then the next chord form is D diminished 7th or D fully diminished as it go. Okay? So, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, there's a couple extra chords to know. D7 sharp 9, which is uh, some people call it the Jimi Hendrix chord. It's DC, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and people play that chord by singing. Many of you already know that. It's like a D9 chord. That would be a D9, but I pop my finger up there. It's D7 sharp 9. And then D7 flat 9 is when you bar here and you put your uh, third finger here at the fifth fret, so I'm barring the fourth fret on the D, G, and B string. Then I pop that note there. Then I add my middle finger there at the uh, fifth fret. That's a D7 flat 9, so D7 sharp 9, D7 flat 9. And there's one more chord form to know. It's the minor 9. Because this is really common. Okay, that would be D minor 9. This would be D9. We'll say you can know that because that's just a variation of this uh, uh, dominant 7 sharp 9, regular 9, flat 9, and then D minor 9.
that chord will be used a lot. Okay, so those are all the chords you need to know. That's, uh, let me think here. So we had seven root six, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine root five voicings to know. That will get you through any jazz standard, period. Okay, the next thing you need to know, and this is for soloing purposes, are the arpeggios that go with this. Now, many of you rock guys know about arpeggios. Arpeggios are things that people play sweet picking on. If you're Ingve Malmsteen or Guthrie Govan or Steve Vai or um, a lot of guys play sweet picking. Um, but we're not going to be sweet picking. Frank Gambali, we're not going to sweet pick them. We're going to actually pick them with alternate picking. Uh, because we don't do a lot of sweet picking in jazz. That's not, not totally true because actually jazz guys did sweet picking years and years ago. You'll hear a lot of jazz records with sweet picking with, with, uh, on guitar. But uh, the first set of arpeggios are going to be the root six arpeggios that will go with each chord. So typically the way you practice this is you play the chord, A major seven, then I'm going to play an A major seventh arpeggio because you want to practice things together. And here's, here it is. So A, C sharp, E, and I'm going to finish out on the root. So the best way to practice it, play the chord, play the arpeggio. Then you move to the next one, A dominant seventh. I'm going to play the chord, and then I'm going to play the arpeggio. And this arpeggio is 2, 1, 4, shift to 1, 3, 2, 1, 4, 1. That's the A7 arpeggio. So, chord, arpeggio, chord. Next we go to A minor 7th. I'm going to play the chord, and the arpeggio is almost like the A minor pentatonic. There's your A minor pentatonic. Well, it uses some of the notes from the scale, but you'll recognize the shape. One, four, three, one, three. Then bar. chord. Next we're going to do A minor 7 flat 5. It's A minor 7 flat 5. Here's the arpeggio. This is the way I finger it. 1, 4, 2, 1, 4, 2, 1. So you're actually shifting position. I start here and I use my index finger from the 5th fret to the 4th fret. So and then you go back down. So I actually am going, here's my position change, uh, going from this note, the fifth fret of the D string, put my pinky on the seventh fret of the D string so that it will move my position. So that's how I shift positions. Normally you can go there, but you don't want to get into a weird stretch like that. one a diminished seventh so this one can be played a couple different ways the easiest way to do it is to do it like this is to play well we'll do it this way chord and then I'm gonna go with my third finger on the fifth fret I'm gonna go Third, uh, fifth fret, third fret, sixth fret, then shift up one to the fourth fret on the D string, seventh fret of the D string, fifth fret G, fourth fret B, seventh fret B, fifth fret A, uh, E string. So, so A diminished seventh arpeggio. Now, 
The other two chord voicings that I had, the 13th chord and the dominant 7, sharp 5, we don't really need to know those arpeggios right now because we're going to uh, do some other ones. So that's really only uh, about six arpeggios to know there off the root, off the 6th string root or the E string. Next, we're going to move to the root 5 arpeggios. D major 7, here's the arpeggio for that. So I'm going to go... 5th fret, D, uh, A string, 4th fret, D, 7th fret, D, so then I'm going to shift to my middle finger, 6th fret, and then I'm going to go, I actually, we'll go to your index finger there, it's easier to finger. So, 5th, 4th, 7th, 6th fret with my index finger, 7th fret, G string, Middle finger, 7th fret, B string, 5th fret, E string, and then the pinky has to reach up way up to that major 7. Chord. Chord arpeggio chord. Next one. D7. string, 7th fret, E string, chord, arpeggio, chord. Next, minor 7, D minor 7. This is easy. So, 1, 1, 4, 3, but you can reach back and grab that fourth fret. So, chord, arpeggio, chord. That's the minor seven flat five arpeggio. Then we have D diminished seventh, okay? Now there's a couple ways you can play this. I think this is probably the easiest way to play it. You can play it this way. Play it that way. So here's the chord, and we're going to go up to the index finger and play one, four, shift. So fifth fret, eighth fret, shift to the sixth fret, ninth fret, and then you stay in position. Two, one, four, two. So there's one shift. Chord, arpeggio. Chord. Okay. Now for the Dominant 7 sharp 9, don't worry about the arpeggio. Dominant 7 flat 9, don't worry about the arpeggio. And minor 9, don't worry about the arpeggio. Not important right now. These arpeggios are going to be used for soloing purposes. Uh, just practicing them will help you incorporate the licks that I'll show you into them because I'm going to use fragments of the arpeggios in some of the licks that you're going to use. Now, the reason you use licks is to develop a vocabulary of ideas that you will vary over time you'll learn how to play solos based on how you break apart these lines and recombine them. That's how jazz players play. That's how you learn any language. You learn a word here, you learn a word there, you learn a whole phrase, and you start combining phrases together, and you learn a foreign language. Jazz is a foreign language. Once you internalize it, you'll be able to speak it fluently, but you have to learn enough vocabulary to do that and enough phrases. Okay, so uh, the next thing I want to talk about is just basic walking bass lines. Okay, there's only two uh, simple walking bass lines to do. They're, they're when you have a uh, two, five, one progression that lasts over two measures and one that lasts over uh, one measure. So I'll show you how to do that. If I have a two, five, one here, let's say I'm going A minor seven, this is the two chord in G major, and then I'm going to the five chord. So 
I'm going to go uh, B minor 7 to D9. That was one, remember, we have D7 sharp 9, D9, D7 flat 9. So I'm going to go A minor 7, D9, G major 7. That's a 2 5 1 in the key of G. That's a 2 chord, 5 chord, 1 chord. Now, to walk a bass line, you play. One bar two five one. So these the two and the five chord are in one bar, and you go, you play thumb chord passing note chord passing note. Those passing notes are always a half step above or below the next chord. Or so even on the G chord, I'm either leading in. above on both of them, or I can go below on that one, or I can alternate them. Above, below, or I can go below, above. So I'm either going below the note, up to the note, or going above the note, down to the note. Above, down, or below, up. Those are your variations for that. If you have a, the two and the five chord in one measure and then the one chord in another measure on its own. That's very common in jazz. You see it all the time in standards. Now the next thing it, that we'll do is the same thing off the uh, A string with the root five chord. The two chord is a root five chord. And we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna do D minor seven or D minor nine. We can do like a... I'm gonna do like this D minor I. So I'm gonna use that 13th chord that we taught, that I taught you, but I'm gonna use G, G13. So I'm gonna go D minor nine. It's kind of a stretch here. You got that second finger at the third fret. So you have to do that and then get these two fingers in here. A little tricky, but you'll get it. There's my passing note. So I'm playing thumb, and then the, my other fingers are playing the rest of the chord, so. place down. So if I'm going to go, so that index finger is going to lead in or, so the index finger is going to play the root, so I'm going to either lead in with it from above or below. Okay, so that's the, what I call the one bar two five one, off the sixth string and off the fifth string. The next one we're going to do is when you have the two chord in one measure, the five chord in another measure, and the one chord in one measure or two measures. Okay, so that's the what I call the the uh, four bar two five one or or uh, the where you or the two chord in one bar, five chord in one bar, the one chord in one bar. But we're not going to get too fancy. We're just going to play like this. some fancy walking bass lines like that you can get in where you're walking uh, walking with chords and everything but I don't want to do that teach you a basic pattern to accompany another guitar player or a piano player or whatever and you're just gonna go then you do your upper neighbor tone that thumb is playing quarter notes dun, 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 dun. There are things you can do. That's a little fancier. You can go. I'm just using neighbor tones here. I'm going. Dun, 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 
just move the chord. So I just. That's all you're doing here. You're just moving it, uh, moving the note a half step above or below. And we're going to do the same thing with the root five chord. Okay, we're going to do this. Same voicing D minor nine to G 13 to C major seven, but we're going to go. So. You don't even have to do that on the one chord. One other thing that you can do as a variation is you can just pop your middle finger. On those root five chords, you can always go across to the fifth on the major seventh, dominant seventh, and minor seventh. You can't do it on the minor seven flat five. If you had that, you have to actually go because that note is in the chord, a tritone away. That note right there so that's the only exception that you make okay so those are one bar major two five ones okay and two bar major two five ones now you have to know one bar and two bar minor two five ones okay so that's going to consist of a minor seven flat five going to a dominant seventh going to a minor seventh okay in this case we're going to take um i'll take d minor seven flat five here fifth fret so root five uh, we'll do this one first root five so we're always alternating root five and root six chords so I've got D minor seven flat five so I'm gonna go so there's a chord passing tone now, on minor two five ones, you always make that chord. It's got to be either a, a dominant seven sharp five or, or dominant seven flat nine. It has to have some alteration on the, on the fifth or the ninth. You're either going to use a sharp nine flat nine or sharp five flat five. So, and you're going to do the half step motion. You're going to dun ga do 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 do. Right? And same thing uh, when you're doing. A two bar So I'm just going Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with the minor seven flat five chord on the sixth string So it's gonna be the sixth string my uh, two chord to the Five uh, root five dominant seven flat nine to the root five root six uh, minor seven chord. So it's going to be A minor seven flat five to D seven flat nine to G minor seven. Okay, and we're going to go. The we're going to do the two chord and five chord in the same measure to the one chord. We're going to walk the bass. It's going to be the same. It's the same stuff. That uh, one chord per bar, you go like this. Or. Very simple. Once you get used to these, you're like, oh man, that's so easy. Um, when I started the video, I was doing a little. Um, Thing where I was just doing a bunch of dominant chords and just doing three notes. So we go. With all those upper neighbors, or you can use lower neighbors or alternating.
from above, above, down, below, up, down. Here's the two chord forms I'm using. And so 12, 11, 12, 10, 10, 11. That's without any passing tones. So that's the progression. things too if you want you I like to do them that's using an upper and lower neighbor tone when I say neighbor I just mean it's a half step above the thing or a half step below so I'm going sounds like jazz right jazz players get that feel and you keep those chords ringing keep those inner fingers I'm kind of keeping my, my third finger down here so it all rings together so on and so forth that's pretty easy okay the that's the walking bass the last thing we need to learn are some licks now once again, we're going to learn some, just a couple major 2-5-1 licks uh, with the 2 and 5 chord in one bar and the 1 chord in one bar, and we're going to learn it with the uh, 2 chord in, in for a full measure, the 5 chord for a full measure, and the 1 chord for a full measure. I'm going to take the key of, uh, let's say, uh, G major, uh, or let's say F major here. So I'm going to go G minor 7 to C7 to F major 7. So I'm going to start here in the fifth position because there's an F major. We're in the key of F major. I'm going to use this scale. This is the notes of F major. Start at the fifth fret. Fifth, sixth, eighth. Fifth, seventh, eighth. Fifth, seventh, eighth. Fifth, seventh. Fifth, sixth, eighth. Fifth, sixth, eighth. It's really like an A Phrygian fingering. But here's a scale from F. It's really F major. So here I'm going to play an arpeggio like this. So. So I'm going from the third of this chord. I'm using this shape. It's actually a B flat major seven shape that I'm playing over a G minor chord. Okay. And then. Part of a C7 arpeggio there. And I'm resolving to the third of the F major seven. Okay, that's one, that's a with the G minor seven and C7 chord in one bar, F major seven chord in the second bar. That's what we call an unaltered 2 5. The 5 chord has no alterations on them. No sharp 5, no flat 5, no sharp 9, no flat 5, flat 9. Now I'm going to show you one with an altered 5th or 9th. So it's going to go like this. Sharp, sharp five of this chord, even though I haven't shown you that chord yet, we know the sharp nine chord, that's C7 sharp nine. If you bar your pinky across, that's C7 sharp nine sharp five. That would be A line. Here's without it. 
I played a little bit of extra stuff on the F major chord. Here's the unaltered 2-5. If you have uh, this chord like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that's one bar a piece. Here's your lick. It's going to start the same way. So I'm going to go bum, 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 bum. I'm going to go four, three, two, one, pinky up at the eighth fret, then I'm going to come down chromatically. of it's scalar. I have that little leading tone up to the third of this F major 7. Okay, so that is a what I would call a one bar a piece 2-5-1. Okay, so G minor, se G minor 7, C7, Now I'm going to teach you the same lick but with an altered five chord. So it's going to be like this. So it uses some of that first lick that we learned. Okay, the one. But we're going to go. So. Those are your two licks you need to know that are your uh, one bar, two, uh, th I'm sorry, those are your four licks that you need to know that are, uh, we did two where the two and five chord are in one bar, and we did two where the two chords in one bar, the five chords in one bar, and the one chords in another bar. Now we're going to do the same thing with the minor two, five, one. That means it's going to be a minor seven flat five. <laughs> So it's going to be E minor 7 flat 5, and I'm going to do A7 sharp 5 to D minor 7. Okay, so this is a minor 2, 5, 1 in D minor. E minor 7 flat 5, so this is the line we're going to play. Um, we're going to do, so it's going to be... Da, da. So that's where the two, the half diminished chord and the, the 2 and the 5 chord, minor 2 and the 5 chord, are in the same bar, so it's like this. this same shape because we're kind of still still in that F major shape so I'm gonna go so I ended it kind of the same way it actually works on the D minor chord okay um, and I can go the next lick is gonna go like this Minor two five ones were the half diminished chord and the five chord. The minor two, uh, the two chord and the five chord are in the same bar. And then we're gonna do two where you have the um, one bar a piece. So it's gonna be. So I'm gonna do some of these. Um, uh, let me do something like this. Changes chords. 
middle finger across. Da, 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 and this word. Da, 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 da. Okay, that's your first one. And then we can do. Um, slow down the video um, but okay so that are those are your um, minor two five one licks uh, with the root off the fifth string now we need some minor two five one licks with the root off the, the minor two chord of the uh, sixth string um, so I'm gonna do it like this. I'm on A minor seven flat five, and uh, and we go. Uh, let's do it like this. When I go to that, you know I'm going to that D seven flat nine chord. So da 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 da. That's one. So it's da 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 right. Okay. And then we can play for the second one. Um, let's see. Um, Walking right down this um, to where in a B flat major, we're, we're in that B flat major scale. So we're, this is a two minor two five one G minor. So it's going to go. So you think of the chord there, and I'm right here. There's your where the change. So here's my second one where we've got the the two chord and 
one bar, the five chord in one bar, and the one chord in one bar or two bars. I'm going to once again do a bass out of this position. I'm going to start here on the note C. I'm going to go. something like that let's see two there four eight sixteen licks maybe I don't know go back through and learn it um, that's pretty much it that's the beginning of being able to play basic jazz guitar for rockers right there you learn those chord voicings you learn the arpeggios you learn the simple walking lines and you learn those few licks from memory once you have those memorized, then you can really start to get more advanced with it. But that right there will teach you all the basics that you need to know to play the chords to any jazz standard. You can sit with a real book and you can play the chords to any jazz standard just with everything I just taught you there. That's all for now. If you're interested in getting more in depth, you can check out my book, The Beato Book, by going to rickbeato.com and you'll find it there. Thanks everybody for watching. Take care. And now we're gonna sign off after Aaron turned off the camera. Once he actually can get to it, which is right. <laughs>